All right, today we are talking about this man. Does anybody know who this is? Well, you may have seen him before. Uh, you may have seen him looking a little bit older, more like this. And you may have seen him at breakfast time, uh, looking a little more cartoony and looking more like this. And that is William Penn. Now, the Quaker oatmeal guy, they claim, is not William Penn, uh, but he is a Quaker. And this is how Quakers dressed, whether it was William Penn or whether it was the gentleman on the oatmeal box. That's what a Quaker sort of looked like. They dressed in plain clothes. And we'll talk more about the Quakers and their beliefs as we get started here today. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at. Okay. Hi guys. We are moving on today to lesson two of chapter two. And lesson two is titled William Penn's Colony. And of course, Pennsylvania is sort of indirectly named after William Penn. And I'll explain that here in just a bit. Uh, most people think William Penn named Pennsylvania after himself. And that's not exactly true. So we'll find out what I'm talking about here as we go. There are some good new vocab words here, some words you may not know about. First word there is debt. It looks like it says debt if you look at it, or debit. A lot of people mispronounce that and think it's debit. But there's no I in there. If there was an I between the B and the T, it's debit but it's just debt, okay? Then beneath that we have charter, tolerance, assembly, and veto. So we'll be talking about all of those terms here as we go. The vocab strategy explains the word tolerance and it says the A-N-C-E suffix means the act of doing something. So tolerance is the act of accepting different beliefs, the act of tolerating or accepting things that are different from what you believe yourself. So we'll be talking more about that and how, what that has to do with William Penn as we go too. Uh, it says build on what you know. Oh, and our time period here before I move on. Time period now is 1681 to 1718. And that was basically William Penn's lifespan from the time he came to Pennsylvania or was given Pennsylvania. And we'll talk about how all that happened. Uh, to the time of his death. So 1681 to 1718. Build on what you know. You know that religion is important to many people. It can affect the choices they make. Religion was very important to many of the first settlers in Pennsylvania. So Religion, we talked about in our last section about how some people that came to North America were coming here looking for a place where they could practice their religion freely. And that's exactly what we have in the case of William Penn and the Quakers. They needed a safe place to practice their religion. A new colony forms. The main idea says that William Penn established the Pennsylvania colony as a place where Quakers could freely practice their religion. In the late 1600s, William Penn, a man from a wealthy English family, asked King Charles II to grant him land in North America. The king owed a debt to Penn's father. A debt is money that is borrowed and must be paid back. So, First of all, I got to show you King Charles. Take a look at King Charles. Now, does he look like anybody to you? I have no proof of this other than my own guesses. But when I look at him, the person that comes to mind right away for me is Captain Hook from Peter Pan. Isn't there a resemblance between them, don't you think? I, I don't know. I always felt like Disney had to have based Captain Hook on Peter, or on uh, King Charles II, although I've never been able to find any evidence to support that other than my own hunch. But King Charles II owed William Penn's father some money. Okay? William Penn's father was a pretty powerful man. He was a pretty well-respected man. So his name was Admiral William Penn Sr. And Admiral Penn was owed money by the king. So what happened is Admiral Penn died before the king could repay him. And when that happened, 
Uh, basically, the debt was inherited by his eldest son, which was William Penn Jr. So now, instead of owing the money to Penn's father, he owed the money to Penn directly. And so, a debt is money that is borrowed and must be paid back. If I lent you money and you owed me that money back, if you said, Mr. Wessner, I forgot my lunch money, can I borrow some money for lunch? And I agreed to do that, then you would be in debt to me. Okay? I you would owe that money back. King Charles II agreed to repay the debt by granting Penn this land. So Penn decided, I don't want money. I don't need money. What I really want is a place where I can live and practice my beliefs the way I want to. So instead of money, King Charles, would you please give me land in the new world in payment for that debt? Well, and that was kind of a win-win for the king because he gets his debt paid off. He gets rid of William Penn and maybe all the Quakers will go with him because the king didn't really like the Quakers. And we'll talk more about that. Uh, but King Charles II agreed to pay that debt by granting Penn the land in Pennsylvania. The king signed the Charter of 1681, establishing a new colony. A charter is an official document. So there's one of our vocab words. Charter is an official document that tells how something should be done. The new colony was called Pennsylvania. So Penn came after the Penn family. But William Penn really chose that part of it to honor his father. And he didn't even want to include his name in the name. He wanted to call his colony Sylvania, meaning woodlands, uh, because Pennsylvania was covered with forest at this time. Because there hadn't really been anybody here to cut it down. The Native Americans who lived here didn't clear the forests. It wasn't until the Europeans arrived that they started cutting down the forests to make room for more uh, settlements. But William Penn wanted to call the colony Sylvania. The king insisted that his father's name be honored as well, so that's where the Penn part came in. So it was Pennsylvania. Okay. Now, from time to time here as we read, I'm also going to be reading uh, from this book as well. And this book is called simply William Penn. Okay. So this will give us some more background. But Penn's colony, it says, was officially established by King Charles on March 4th, 1681. Okay. So I'm going to switch books here and we'll just kind of read a little bit out of this one for now. To talk about young William Penn. Guide for a Nation. People often make changes in their lives. A few, like William Penn, changed the lives of many others. William Penn founded the colony of Pennsylvania in 16... Now here it says 1682. The charter was given in 1681. He didn't really arrive and get everything set up uh, until 1682. He also created a new kind of government for his colony. It gave people more freedom and more control over their own lives. Penn's ideas for Pennsylvania changed the way people thought of government. About a hundred years later, Penn's ideas served as a guide for the new nation of the United States. So the ideas we're going to read about in this lesson are things that helped to make uh, decisions when the Founding Fathers were writing the Declaration of Independence, were writing the Constitution. They looked back to Penn's beliefs and Penn's ideas, among the ideas of other uh, early leaders. A Time of Troubles Penn did not set out to guide a nation. He was an Englishman who only wanted to be left alone to practice his religion. He was born in London, England on October 24, 1644, to a wealthy family. Penn's father was an admiral in the Royal Navy. Admiral Penn served the leaders of England. He helped remove King Charles, King Charles I, in 1649, and later helped bring in the son of Charles as king in 1660. Young William grew up at court, where he was comfortable meeting with and talking with the Duke of York and other leaders. He also grew up during a time of trouble and change in England. Much of the trouble in England in the mid-1600s had to do with religion. Different religions wanted to hold power in England. These included Catholics, Puritans, and members of the Church of England called Anglicans. And it was the Church of England that, according to the laws of the king, 
Everybody had to belong to the Church of England. You were not allowed to belong to any other religion other than the religion the king told you to believe in. And we'll talk more about that. Each of these groups wanted to be the official church of the country. When one group was in power, it mistreated the other groups. For belonging to the wrong religion, people were put in prison or fined. They were even killed. This persecution, or cruel treatment, led groups of Puritans to leave England. Now, you might be familiar with a group of Puritans that came here in about 1620, about 60 years before William Penn founded Pennsylvania, and they were often known as the Pilgrims. So, the Pilgrims that celebrated the first Thanksgiving and landed at Plymouth Rock in 1620, they were part of this religious disagreement that was going on in England at the time. Uh, they just came before the Quakers did. This persecution or cruel treatment led groups of Puritans to leave England. They hoped for a fresh start in North America where they would not be persecuted. Many Puritans settled in the colony of Massachusetts. They made their religion the official religion. Religion. Catholics and Quakers were not allowed to live there. So they decided, okay, if we can't be welcome in England and have our beliefs, we'll come to North America, we'll start a new colony, and we'll live in Massachusetts, and we'll be the only ones, our religion will be in charge there. So you could not live in Massachusetts if you were not a Puritan. You were not allowed or you're not legally allowed to believe in any other religion living in England except for Anglican at this time. When he was 20, Penn joins the Quakers. When he was 23 years old, William Penn joined a group called the Society of Friends. The Friends, also called the Quakers, were often put in jail. Their beliefs threatened the leaders of England. The Quakers considered all people to be equals. Now think about that. Why would that threaten the King of England? Well, the whole idea of having a king as a leader means that you're better than everybody else. You can't just decide, oh, I want to be king when I grow up, okay? You can't do that because the only way to become king is to be born into royalty. So that threatened the ideas that made the whole monarchy system of England work. The idea of being a king meant you're better than the common folk. You're better than those common people living in the villages. Uh, you're above them. So the idea that we had people saying, well, wait a minute, all people are equal. Well, whoa, that doesn't work. For the King of England, okay? And you may have heard that line before because how does Thomas Jefferson start the Declaration of Independence? One of the very early lines in that document is we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Okay? So we'll be talking more about the Declaration of Independence down the road, but just to realize those ideas started out here with William Penn and with others who believed like he did, uh, that all people were equal. They did not feel they had to take their hats off to anyone who was supposed to be better in the eyes of society. And that was one of the rules in England. You had to take your hat off to salute the king or to show respect to the king because he was better than you. He's the king. Okay. The Quakers didn't have churches. They met in people's homes. They would not swear loyalty to anyone or anything but God, not even the king. For this reason, the Quakers were sometimes charged with treason, which was a crime against the king. Quakers would not fight for the king because they did not believe in violence. When Penn became a Quaker, he gave away his sword. Now, another thing Quakers wouldn't do, and I don't know if this comes up later in the book or not, but they would not pay, they did not wish to pay taxes that could be used to support a war or to support fighting. So, in England, everybody had to pay taxes, just like we do today. Uh, and the Quakers didn't believe in paying taxes that could be used to support violence or fighting. Penn became a writer and a leader in the Quaker faith. He preached at Quaker meetings and devoted his life to ending the persecution of Quakers. He even spent time in prison. I believe he was arrested four times 
and usually it was just for preaching about his beliefs. However, Penn stayed friends with the very leaders he would not bow to. He used those friendships to help the Quakers. Let's see, I think I want to go back to the main textbook for a few minutes, and then we'll come back to this one again and read a little more about some of the things that shaped young Penn. Religious Freedom As a young man, William Penn had joined a religious group known as the Society of Friends, or Quakers. He hoped to establish a safe home for Quakers in the Pennsylvania colony. Quakers dressed and spoke plainly, and believed that all people were equal. In England, Quakers were often not treated fairly because their religion was different from the Church of England. Penn wanted the Pennsylvania colony to be a place of religious tolerance. Tolerance means allowing beliefs that are different from one's own. Pennsylvania colonists believe that people of different religions should live together in peace. They believed in religious tolerance. So they didn't just want a home for Quakers. We mentioned that the Puritans wanted a home in Massachusetts for Puritans. William Penn wasn't interested in a home for just Quakers. Penn believed that people of different religions could live together. That's what wasn't happening in England. They were arguing, they were fighting, they were going to war over these different religious beliefs. And this had been happening for hundreds of years. But William Penn believed it could work. He believed you could put people that had different backgrounds and different religions and different beliefs all together and have them treat each other with respect. He called it his religious experiment. Okay? And it was an idea that had never been seen before. So it's pretty remarkable. And of course, as we know now, it worked. The United States followed that lead. The United States became a country with freedom of religion uh, as one of our freedoms. So that's a pretty important thing that this idea not only worked for William Penn with his little experiment here in the Pennsylvania colony, but eventually was expanded to the entire United States. Uh, pretty remarkable thing if you looked at it from the time period of the 1660s and 70s when William Penn was a young man. Let's continue a little more in this book for today. An independent jury. In 1670, Pem was arrested for attending a Quaker meeting. He had broken a law that said no one could go to any church but the Church of England. To his surprise, Pem was also charged with treason, which was punishable by death. The charge of treason was not true, but the leaders of England wanted to send a message. They wanted to frighten William Penn and the Quakers. The case was heard in front of a judge and a 12-man jury. The jury heard the evidence and they listened to Penn defend himself. They decided that Penn was not guilty. The judge was outraged. He ordered the jury to change their verdict. When they didn't, he threw all 12 men of the jury in prison. He ordered them to stay there until they changed their minds. But the jury members were brave. They would not change their verdict. In the end, the judge simply announced that Penn was guilty. Penn and the jurors were sent, were sent to Newgate Prison, one of the worst prisons in London. Eventually, Penn was freed when his father paid to get him out of jail. One of our privileges, one of our rights as American citizens is that we have the right to trial by jury and to be tried fairly if we're ever accused of a crime. And hopefully you're never going to be accused of a crime. But it's nice to know that if that would happen, you have the right to a trial where not just one person can say he's guilty because I don't like him. And that's what happened to Penn. The judge didn't like him, didn't agree with him. The king, of course, was kind of on the judge's side, didn't like and agree with the Quaker beliefs. So he was put in prison because of what he believed and because of going to church where he believed in. Later, the Lord Chief Justice of England heard the case. He decided that the first judge had acted illegally. His decision was important for the judicial system of England. It made it illegal for judges to influence or tamper with a jury's decision. So this did change some things for England as well. From that day on, the right to an independent jury became part of the United States laws too. 
A new idea, religious tolerance. By the late 1670s, Pym was ready to follow the example of the Puritans. He felt that the Quakers would never be free to worship in England. He remembered that his father had loaned money to the king. So he asked the king, Charles II, to pay off the debt. Instead of money, though, Penn asked the king for land in North America. Charles II agreed. He gave Penn a huge tract of land. He insisted that it be called Pennsylvania, which means Penn's Woods after Penn's father. Not after the William Penn we're talking about, but after William Penn Sr. Charles II was happy to pay off the debt. It also solved another problem for him. Many Quakers would soon be leaving England. Penn saw his new land as a big opportunity for the Quakers. He invited Quakers to move to Pennsylvania, where they could worship freely and publicly. Many other groups were re religious groups were banned or not allowed in England. They made the move along with the Quakers. In 1681, the Quakers joined the Pilgrims and Puritans in America. Then, Penn went one step further. He invited people of all faiths to settle in his colony. He guaranteed that an official religion would never be established there. All religions would be welcome. This idea was called religious tolerance. So a very important idea, a very new and revolutionary, different idea uh, established by William Penn. We'll wrap up there for today. Uh, tomorrow we'll read more about how he organized his colony and some of the laws that he did create here. So that's where we'll continue next time. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.